Oh, look at that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Well, hello, one and all. Welcome. Episode number 10 of Poetica here. We've got quite an episode planned. We're going to be leaving... Well, we've got to name it as well. We'll get to that in a minute. We're going to be naming and then leaving this settlement for now. We may come back, but for now, we're going to head off on a, on a journey of excitement. But first things first, I did spot this when I was editing. Yes, when I was editing the other day. Do you remember we went wandering out looking for for more limonite, for this bog iron, is I believe what it's, what it's known as. We've got some right here, right next to our base. So that was actually, that's quite a small amount actually, just a tiny little, uh, little hole here. Um, however, there is more over here as well, which I think this is the actual bit that I spotted when I was editing last episode. Look at this. I never used to bother um, gathering poor quality or processing poor quality iron and the main reason for that is that the bloomery is so expensive when it comes to charcoal which is so time consuming when it comes to cutting wood however now that we can pour them into cast iron ingots and use those in the bloomery this stuff is actually especially just for a few starting tools and things or maybe making some armor who knows seems totally just a lot more worth it i said it does look like these are two very small deposits yeah anyway so between episodes i did process all the rest of the uh bismuth bronze into the eight double sheets i did use the iron tongs which you'll notice have no durability taken from them these guys will last us forever it seems gone are the days of uh, stressing about mittens now we've got this 40 units of bismuth there I would really like to see if I can make, you know, maybe 360 units to get up to that. I think 360 is a good place to aim. All right, so first things first, through the power of incredible mathematics, I have managed to make the scraps of copper and bismuth and sphalerite that we have left into something that I think works. Let's see. 20.8% zinc, I think is fine. 19.4% bismuth is fine and 59% copper. That's all fine, isn't it? Yeah. 360 units of bismuth bronze in that, right? So that's perfect. That will go nicely with our 40 units there. And we'll make like a saw, a chisel, and a couple of pro picks, I think. You know, these are the tools that don't really, or maybe a hammer even. They're the tools that don't require um, speed for breaking blocks. It's really just durability. So the, the, the tools that require speed and damage and things like that will definitely always use iron but those ones I think we can get rid of a bit of bismuth with so let's throw that in there we're gonna get, get that cooking in a moment um, but then I also think we may as well just calculate how much of this we've actually got here <laughs> okay kind of annoying we have seven ingots and 90% of an ingot we have 7.9 ingots if we could just find one more piece <laughs> Um, but I don't think it's likely. That said, now that I know the signature thing is this kind of grass, I'm starting to wonder if this is it. Oh my god, it is as well. All of this here, right next to our base, this is all limonite. There's absolutely loads of it. So I think we're going to dig it all out and replace it with dirt. Alright, sweet. Back in a minute. <laughs> Alright, yeah, this is kind of wild, you guys, because there's a big footprint of it here, but then also all of this area seems to go deeper than just one than just one block right um so yeah there's a lot of it to gather and i guess what we do need to do is just block in the water first so i'm gonna well we'll do this bit first because this bit should be easy enough to manage just take two out of there pop those back on and so on all right decent 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 we can probably just fill in all of this as well now to be honest the best thing for us to do is to like put a kind of maybe a two block perimeter like this um just so that we're going nowhere near the edge and kind of yeah just just fill it in a bit and give ourselves that room to dig dig blocks out from from here without kind of affecting things too much that should be fine now everything should hold i'm hoping um and we can just dig all this out oh it goes underneath okay well we can get rid of that and that 
Yes, yeah, so this is why the the two block buffer is probably a nice a nice idea here. How deep is it going to go? How deep is your iron? Yeah, this is going to be quite a lot. Okay, sweet. Well, let's mine it all. <laughs> oh, wow, the bismuth bronze shovel just broke. And this iron one is so much faster. It's amazing. All oh, right, well, not bad. So well, how much do we get here? A decent amount. A very, very decent amount. Yeah, okay, so my calculation here is that we have 42 ingots and a spare 80 units from this incomplete stack here. So we could do two bloomeries of 21 ingots apiece, um, or else we try and top it up to get two full 24 ingot runs, but that might be a little trickier. I mean, with the second bloomery block, we could even run them simultaneously, but then we'd have to build another thing. And I think we, we're going to have enough time here. We, we need to pack, we need to basically pack everything into our backpack and uh, many, many vessels and all the rest of it. So I think we'll have time to... Uh, to just run it twice and be reasonably relaxed about it. Look at this geezer up here. How scenic is that? Well, look, I do actually have seven stacks of marble dirt, so why don't we just try and fill in as much of our mess as we can um, and take it from there. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we didn't run too, too short. It's a little hole. A little hole out the back. Once all that's covered back up in grass should be looking fine and it looks like this is spreading right oh is that one we never broke yeah it might not be mm, mm. let's see let's just leave it and see what happens now look we've got some rotten food here which apparently we can make sandwiches and things out of <laughs> I, I read in the comments last time um but we we probably won't do that let's just pop those the, the food one up there for now so these should all be empty vessels indeed they are um, yeah, let's just see how much of this stuff we can we can fit into uh, vessels. Uh, we want to leave 80 behind, I think. If my calculation was correct, perfect. And then all of those have have the stuff in it. Let's take the food one back. We actually need to sort ourselves out some food here. All right, this mutton needs eating immediately. Hold on a minute, I'm super confused. <laughs> Where did the food that was in here go? Didn't this have the rotten food in it? What's happened? I just checked those were the empty ones. Those are the empty ones. That's all the limonite. And that guy should have had the rotten apple in it, but it seems like it went onto the shelf and came back off empty. <gasps> it comes back off empty. We just lost all the food we just put in there again. So the vessels on the shelves cu come back empty off the shelf. Luckily those two were empty anyway and we've only been using the shelf so far to store empty vessels. But that is, that could have been a lot worse than just losing a little bit of food where to be honest all this food is about to go rotten anyway. What's the sugar cane actually saying? Expires in two days. Is there anything we can... What do we actually do with it then? Can we, like, process it? Yeah, I'm going to go and grind it into sugar. Mashed sugar cane. Oh. Is it going to be work in progress? Or is it going to be normal sugar? Okay. Mashed sugar cane. Put in a sandwich. It will decay in ten days, though. Okay, cool. So we're going to cook all of this stuff up now, then. So that's the rest of the... Bismuth, but, oh, but before we do that, we are making four tools. Okay, yeah, let's take these out first. See, I think we make ourselves another saw, another chisel, definitely another pro pick. And then do we make a second pro pick or do we, let's, should we make ourselves another hammer so we can leave one hammer behind here? We're going to probably set the bismuth anvil back up here. So leaving one hammer behind might be uh, just a kind thing to do. So yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't we make ourselves another hammer for uh for the anvil that we take with us all right let's get that going sorted now mustn't forget to wear our tongs very important all right and it's go time with these liquid and these are all finished as well now one thing i'm not sure of is the interface of pouring from one ingot mold to another so we'll do that first we we'll grab this out of there 
And then it's it's this guy here that we need to normally right click it. Yeah, and then, okay, great. We can pour out the mold into that one. Fine, so that hasn't changed in TNG. And we get our empty ingot mold back. And we've got these uh, all to cool, but we can also just throw those guys in and get them get them warming up. Just do this and just throw. In fact, we can even throw those in there and that. Um, yeah, put that vessel in there as well, whatever. That guy's a bit hot. All right, awesome. All right, and then, yeah, I guess these just need pumping, don't they? Now, one thing to remember, do you remember, it was very slow to pour these. Very slow indeed, because you got to keep them really hot. But I think with five in there at once, we should always have, once they all switch, we should always have something to pour. We just keep pumping and pouring, as it were. All right, here we go. That is the last ingot poured. Feeling hot. Should be able to just salvage all of that. Um, yeah, and then just, just get cooling. All right, so just because it's so satisfying, let's pile all these ingots up here. Oh, look at that. Yeah, boy. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> now I just pick them straight up again. <laughs> okay, so we'll start by doing a max-sized bloomery, I guess. Or should we split them evenly? Maybe we should split them evenly. 21 a piece. Anyway, so we'll start with our eight underneath. And these are pretty much max size bloomeries, so it's, it, we're, we're pretty close to to good here. 21 and 21. In it all goes. And yep, that did all indeed get munched. Perfect. Voila. All right, so that's the next bloomeries worth, the 29 charcoal and the 21 cast iron. That'll be the second bloomery. Let's uh, also do this. We can actually make our second bloomery block that's very exciting so we could in fact start packing our bags now all right well let's make all our tools as well um yeah but chuck all those in there yeah cool okay so that's one thing i guess we'll start down here so what i'm thinking is is that the urns should be filled with vessels of these things right get all these geodes going for a kickoff Chipped opal, sure. Yeah, and all the seafood, <laughs> whatever it is. Okay, so first step is complete. I've packed up all of the ores and geodes and uh, sea minerals and everything into this one urn full of vessels. I've actually got room for one more vessel there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty decent going. And this is obviously empty, this crate as well. So I think, I think we should be all right. We are just going to probably... Run out of vessels. There's a couple more here. Which I presume are both empty. They are. And do we have any more out here? I don't think so. I think that is all of our vessels. That guy's still going. Now for all of the natural stuff, all of this stuff here, more and more and more and more vessels is actually going to be beneficial. So while we wait for the bloomery to finish, I think we should do a batch or two. All right, cool. I thought I was recording then, but I wasn't, uh, apparently. <laughs> so we missed, uh, don't know how much, uh, but check it out. The first bloomery finished and we actually got it all done. I didn't even have to fire up the forge. Just the heat that the bloom brought out. I just came over here and I just worked all 21 pieces straight away. Um, so I've just chucked them all in the backpack just so they can cool down in there basically it's just convenience you know um, but i'll show you i'll show you the pro the full process on the second one just how um how speedy at it i am now it's pretty uh pretty nice oh look that hammer's about to go okay so it's good we actually made another one all right so i'm cooking up this extra batch of vessels here there they go um and i've made 11 plus the one spare that we had will give us 12 which is enough to then fill the next urn with uh, with all the like seeds and the nature items and things like that. Right, one of the things for the um for all the nature stuff downstairs is rather than taking a load of beeswax and honeycombs and things, let's just take half a stack of bees. That's that's all we need to do on that front, and we can leave like all of that stuff behind. Um, let's take the bladders. 
guess let's take a stack of rennet and leave some behind. The feathers, I think I'll leave the feathers behind as well. I think that's fine. And that just gives us a, a box of kind of like animal products. So I've done all the seeds and saplings already there. The pumpkins, they all expire in like five days. I'm kind of curious to know if we can make seeds out of them. Ah, we can by doing that. The ones that expire in four days. Let's make all of these into seeds. Oh, whoops. And then it was just like this, right? Yoink. Yeah, we'd, we'd leave all that behind. The pumpkins we can turn into food just before we leave, I guess, for the road. Or we'll, we'll keep them in our backpack like that and turn them into food the day before they expire. Makes sense. And then what do we actually want from here? I think the moss is valuable and the ivy because we can craft that stuff into like those building blocks, the thatchy stuff. Not sure why this stuff doesn't all stack. We don't need to press X on it or something, do we? No, okay, I don't know why. Maybe it's different from different trees it kind of has different metadata somehow don't know i'm totally guessing all the rest of this stuff i think we can just find while we're out and about ah oh, that's finished this is finished right so i can show you just double check i'm definitely recording this time i'll show you just how amazing this is the heat literally is fine like so like this for that one yep perfect and then we want to split it that and then we get all of these and then yeah just start banging them out and switch now it's possible because I wasn't paying attention that we might actually run out of time to get them all done because it might have been sat there cooling down in the bloomery for a while but as you can see like we can make very very quick progress with this because we're not actually welding anything so it really is just <laughs> about banging it out as fast as possible. Ah, right, okay, yeah, so we, we did definitely slack. I ma <laughs> that Because I was paying attention to this guy more the first time, we actually did manage to get all 21 done just on the residual heat. Um, unfortunately, not that time, so we're going to need to just start warming guys up again on here. It's not the end of the world. The other thing we can do, because we are going to want a double bloomery at our next base, Let's take this guy off. So I think you could probably, if you were really on the ball, get a, get all 24 ingots worked just off of the residual heat. I think it's possible. All right, so there it is, our 42 ingots of iron. Very nice. We can take these other random ingots that we've gathered. Mercury and strontium. Yeah, I guess those are all the ingots we have. Now, will ingots go in the crate? No. Okay, so the crate is still limited to small items, just like the urn is. I've started putting the packing the clay in there as well now. Um, and so we're on to this stuff here. It may be that we want to make more vessels for the crate in that case, because there's quite a lot still of small things here that would be nice to take. The wooden stuff I'm less fussed about. Bow and arrow will take. Now there's actually a nice kind of final vessel's worth of stuff here, which is to just put all of the... The so three stacks of charcoal and the stack of ink. Oh, the ingot molds won't go in. Okay, we'll just have a, a thing of, of all of our charcoal then in that case. Even eight pieces is worth a, a spot, I think. Pop that in with the clay and everything else. And that one's done too. The only thing I, I think I do want to do is probably make another batch of vessels. Well, let's see. They are, there's a lot of vessels. Maybe we don't need it. Let's see if we need it. So I'll just pick that guy up as well. That one's in there too. I'm guessing they won't stack. That would be crazy if they could stack with different items inside. Put those ingots in there then. And the ingot molds must go in there rawly as well. And so, then it's just all this stuff going into there. Do we take all the mortar with us? Almost certainly not. And some building blocks. I kind of think... Probably just going to leave most of this stuff behind, leave all the wood behind. All right, so I've got a nice uh, crate's worth of uh, this kind of stuff packed now as well. So that's pretty nice. In the backpack too. Couldn't fit those two things in, so I guess they can just go in loose. Pretty much it. I guess we've got the food. Do you want to grab all the food? 
And then if there's stuff hanging up here that we want to take with us, like the pot and those guys, pop those away. The scythe, isn't this scythe completely brand new? Yep. And we might as well take the half done one as well. We'll leave that pick there. That was our first ever pick, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, these tools can go in there. So the backpack's looking pretty full. The bellows we can make new ones of when we get there. I think that's it. I think we're done. So I think we pick up... Yeah, let's take this hammer with us. We'll just put a stone one on this one for now. Looking in here, we can put those guys away. We've got one more space for something. <laughs> As we adventure, we'll break these tools probably and then put, pull these out of there and... But yeah, that's that's us packed up. We've got an urn full of uh, minerals and ores and things. We've got an urn full of seeds and saplings. We've got a crate full of fibres and straw and flax and things. Got our ingots. Like, yeah, we. I, it's just food. It's just food now. We just grab the food and then we just leave. And are we going to assume that we're going to kill... Oh yeah, look, the grass spread. Nice, it looks kind of good as new around here, apart from that hole, but... Hey, that's a believable looking hole, it's fine. Yeah, it feels nice around here. Oh, you know what? You know what I did want to do? Because there were, we did plant loads of saplings around here that just plainly didn't grow. I think I was shooting for like a big tree here and it never happened. So let's take them with us. And a row of trees here, which clearly they didn't want to grow in rows, these guys. So what are they? We've got like, yeah, a few saplings from around this area. But this one I just planted on its own. It still didn't grow. Don't know why. The walnut. I think I planted a few walnuts around here, didn't I? Like just spread out. Oh, there we go. There's a few that were all next to each other again there. It does look like all the saplings though. We'll leave the drying mats here as well on the basis that we'll find more fruit trees. Obviously, we're leaving the animals behind. I just want to make sure we don't forget anything, but I'm pretty sure this is good to go. Like, we could take the copper anvil with us. Yeah, let's do that because it's copper. That's like 14 ingots worth of copper in there. So I'll chuck that in as well. I think we're ready. The only decision to make is do we... I think we leave the bed behind. Taking it with us would mean we could sleep en route, though, if we got into trouble. Should we take the bed with us? Also, how do we dye the bed, actually? Just quickly. Where did I put my green dye? I think in this urn. In the urn that has all the nature. There it is. Oh, there's actually a s couple of spaces in that. In this one here. So let's take the book out and put the saplings in. Because it makes more sense. And then let's sleep first. Lovely. Pick up the bed. Dye it green for Dankenstein. Okay, so last but not least, grab our food and then we start to say goodbye to this lovely homestead. Some room in these. These can be actually condensed, um, which would make sense. Okay, so let's do one final uh, condensing situation here. Oh, is it so cold that we're, um, we can see our own breath? It's a crisp winter morning, isn't it? December 1st, early winter. What a day to be leaving. We'll leave our cart behind. We can always craft a new one of those. That was easy enough to craft, wasn't it? Well, if we've forgotten something, we've forgotten something. I think that's all we can say. I thought I had planted more saplings over here. Yes, look. Oh, I did them in a row again, and they blatantly didn't work for that reason. Okay, I'm actually too tempted, so let's just dye our backpack here. Should we be doing this when it's empty? Is this a big risk? Okay, no, we, we, didn't, we didn't lose the contents just because we dyed it green. <laughs> That's good. And yeah, it's nice and green. That looks cute. Okay, sweet. Um, I'm going to leave the green dye behind, though, because if you recall, making that was actually really, really, really easy. Yeah, all right. I think I think we've got it. I think we have got it. We've got two spare slots in the backpack now. And we'll just, yeah, we'll just leave the green dye behind. Like, we can basically make out of any of these things that we find. We can just crush up and make green dye whenever we like. All right, boom. Well, it looks like we're ready to go then. And I thought to celebrate the fact that it's episode 10, we should maybe do a little live stream on this series. And I thought, what better subject matter for a live stream than for us to find our new home? 
So yeah, so that's what we're going to do, and it will be uh, tomorrow evening, so Sunday evening, or depending on what time zone you're in, maybe Sunday day or something. But um, yeah, Sunday evening UK time. So you know, just over sort of 24 hours after this episode actually releases, we're going to leave this place. We're going to head out into the great unknown, and so all we've got to do now is rename. Uh, this little marker here, which I don't think you can actually do. I think we have to, I think we have to delete it and then remarker it, which we'll do right now. So a little house, and so yeah, shout outs to uh, Rob's mind in the comments, who I think had the uh, winning suggestion, in, in my opinion, for the name of this location. We are going to be calling this spot the Bismuth Bio, just because of all the swampiness around us. So yeah, shout outs Rob's mind for that. And there we go. So tune in tomorrow for the live stream. I'll no doubt see you then. And we will spend winter journeying far and wide across the map. Um, so yeah, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Uh, shout outs to the patrons. And I'll see you next time. See you tomorrow. Oh, look, it's just started raining. Ah, oh, that's going to be nice, isn't it? Head off into the rain. All right. Peace out. <laughs>